regression analysis students often focus too much attention on outliers and forget or maybe do not know about influential data points but these data points matter more. When we fitted a regression we should look for any unusual data points that affect the stability of the model output. Look at this plot. All except one x take the same value 8. There is one isolated x to the right. If we regress y on x the fitted line looks like this. Think about what would happen if the point on the right is deleted. Would the line still be positively sloped? No, it wouldn't. With the point deleted, there is no correlation between y and x. That one point has a disproportionately big impact on the regression line. It's what is known as an influential point or case observation. Use what word you fancy. So an influential point affects the output and hence conclusions in important ways. Note the output are interlinked. For example, changes in parameter estimates are likely to be accompanied by a change in the t-stats. Identification. Once a model is fitted, we use plots to pick out a possible influential point. Then we assess the changes in the model output when the point is dropped. In light of this, we decide what to do. Drop it or take some other action and I will list these later on. We may examine plots of numerical measures of influence and this is what we're going to be looking at today. Since the parameters and predicted values of y are often the main interest, it's not a surprise the most popular measures are based on the change in parameter estimates or fitted y's when each point is deleted in turn. Well, you just use one of these measures and your decision could be down to what you've been taught or what's available with the stats package you're using. Cook's distance and defits are similar in that they give an overall measure on the change in parameters when each point in turn is deleted. DF betas breaks it down to a change in individual estimated parameters. When the measures are big, then we go to step two in the analysis. How big is big? Now, it's important to note that these measures are not test statistic. There is no null hypothesis, no critical values, no having to reject the null at the 5% significance level. Instead, a number of cutoff values for each measure have been proposed, and when the measures exceed the cutoffs, then it's deemed big. Cutoffs that depend on the sample size are recommended. Cutoffs are guidelines, not strict rules. There's no need to be sciencey on this. For Cook's distance, take your pick from one of the following greater than 1 or 4 divided by the sample size or 4 divided by the sample size minus the number of parameters including intercept or one that stands out a mile from the others. In these measures the level of influence depends on the size of the residual and its degree of leverage in a multiplicative way and this means that an outlier that has a small enough leverage will not be flagged as influential nor will a high leverage point that has small enough residual. Such points will not affect the estimated parameters that much. That's why I said at the start that influential points matter more than outliers. An influential point is likely to have high leverage and be a big enough outlier or be an outlier with high enough leverage. It's all about degrees of both. How to handle influential points. As with outliers, do not simply delete an influential point to improve the look of your output without thinking. That point may be interesting information. Let's regress prestige on income and education and take a look at some of the plots of the influence measures. Here's Cook's D plotted over the observations. Remember, you may use any of the four cutoffs presented. The point hit minister sticks out. Another way to display Cook's D is a bubble plot, which is pretty neat. It shows how studentized residuals and the hat values, which are the leverage points, combine. The size of the circle is proportional to Cook's D, so you look to see if one circle is much larger than the others. The horizontal dotted lines are cutoffs that help assess the degree of outlyingness, and the vertical dotted line help assess the degree of leverage of each point. Points towards the right are deemed to be higher leverage points, and those in the bottom or top right are high leverage and biggish outliers, so would have big Cook's D. Next, here's a plot of D fits over observations, and here's DF betas. This plot differs from the other two because it shows the change in the scale betas for each predictor over the observations. This plot gives more information than the other plots as you can see how much each parameter has been affected when a point has been deleted. So I deleted the case of the biggest influence measure, case 6, which is the minister, and refitted the same model. 
and case 16 stood out in cox D, so I deleted that, meaning cases 6 and 16 have been deleted. Comparing the coefficients before and after deletion of these two cases, the coefficient for income and education have changed around 40 to 45%, so I would say that's a big change. Bringing up a plot of cooks D with the two cases removed, you see though three points are labelled, there are no points that really stand out compared to before. About 4.5% of the cases have been dropped already, and we have to bear in mind influential cases by the nature should only make up a small percentage of the data. So that's the analysis up to step two and we'll leave it there. In summary, one, influential points matter more than outliers. It takes you less than a few seconds to run a regression, but be prepared to spend longer on influence analysis. Two, a fitted model may or may not have influential points. If they're present, they will make up a tiny proportion of the data. Three, influence measures we've looked at do not test that points are influential. They merely suggest a point should be examined. Four, we didn't talk about masking effects. Supposing that we have two influential points that are close together, the individual influence measures may not pick up either point. Finally, when it comes to your project, hope, hope that you don't have influential cases, or hope you do so you can impress your professor of your knowledge of influence analysis. A related problem is the presence of any outliers. Since an outlier may have low influence and so it will be picked up in influence plots, we need to check for those too. That's the topic of another video.